Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get here with the truth. So today we're doing the what's next on Mauricio Lara, the newly crowned WBA featherweight champion following his um, his uh, seventh round uh, TKO victory over Lee Wood and a big matchup right there, a fight that he was losing on the cards, and he caught Lee Wood cold, uh, dropped them hard, and uh, Ben Davidson made a good decision and saved his fighter. Before we get into that, guys, thumbs up. Uh, comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. If you could give me some love, man, and any and any, you want to do anything negative, thumbs down or whatever, do that too. I I I, I want to hear what you guys have to say. I appreciate the honesty. Um, so back to Mauricio Lara. You know, uh, a lot of people thought this was kind of a 50 50 fight. There was a lot of people like me that thought Mauricio Lara was going to win this fight by knockout. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot closer by the time of the knockout, and Lee Wood was out boxing. Mauricio Lara pretty handily. You look at the judges' scorecards, Lee Wood was winning that fight. But Mauricio Lara's just got that wicked kind of power. He really does. That one punch can end it. But every time he lands a punch, it's a hard, thudding shot. Um, if you guys want to go back and watch the Josh Warrington fight, the first one, I didn't think he was a one-hit wonder based on his power in that fight. And because there was no fans, because it was during COVID, during a Warrington fight, you could hear every shot that was landing on Warrington. And they were just thudding, thudding hard shots. Mauricio Lara is a beast. And uh, you could you could hurt him. Yeah, I've seen him get hurt. Um, <coughs> and I've seen him, um, <coughs> you know, losing a fight against Lee Wood. And it just, to him, you got to fight 12 rounds and avoid him for 12 rounds or he's going to be there. And if he hurts you, that could be all she wrote. And that's what happened. But anyway, now, following that win, what what's next for Mauricio Lara? Well, um... Rematch clause, there is a rematch clause for Lee Wood, but what I just read today is that, um, uh, well, I'm just going to throw the options that I've heard since the fight. A rematch with Lee Wood is on the table. We'll talk about that more when we get to him, when we run through the top 10. And then a third fight with Josh Warrington are the two popular options right now for Mauricio Lara following this win. So let's run through the top 10, be fair. And, and go through what could happen for, e for each uh, scenario, okay? So we start with Emmanuel Navarrete first is not in the, the featherweight top 10 anymore. So we'll start with Ray Vargas, the WBC champ. Not going to happen. First, the promotional issue is there, but also uh, Ray Vargas just lost. I don't think he'd want to fight Lara anyways, but also Vargas is going to have a mandatory be uh, due um, between the winner of uh, Figueroa and Magsayo that's happening this Saturday. So I don't see that one. I don't see Vargas being an option. Uh, Mark Maxayo, not going to happen. He's fighting to become mandatory with Figueroa, and the winner will get a crack at Vargas. Now, if all things uh, went perfectly for Maxayo and he beats Figueroa and Vargas doesn't want to fight him in a rematch, which I doubt, maybe the second half of the year, but then again, Lara has other options within the zone that make more sense. So I'm not seeing it. Gary Russell Jr., not going to happen. Gary Russell's made it clear he's moving up to 130 next, and we don't know when the hell that's going to fucking take place. This dude only fights once a year at best. Um, Brandon Figueroa, not likely. Figueroa is going to fight Magsayo. I think he's going to beat Magsayo. And then if he does beat Magsayo, he's going to be lined up for a Vargas shot. And um, if that doesn't happen, if Vargas doesn't want to fight him and he gets upgraded to, to full champ, maybe there's a chance of him and Lara in the second half of the year. But it's the, you know, different promotions and Lara has so many other options with uh, with the zone and match room right now. So it doesn't make sense. Luis Lopez, the IBF champion. Another fight, very intriguing, would be a good match. But Lopez uh, likely going to fight Michael Conlon. He's with top rank. He's got options. Lara's got options. Not likely we're going to see this one yet. Lee Wood, a rematch. Absolutely think that's possible, but... Um, what I read today was that Lee Wood uh, would have to get that rematch in between May and June at the latest in order for, uh, you know, because I think that's the timetable on a potential rematch. Um, you know, most likely Lara is going to fight Warrington. And I'll throw Warrington in because he's the next guy on the list anyways. The likely scenario from what I'm hearing is that Eddie Hearn wants to match Lara and Warrington for a third time. And then Lee Wood fights the winner. Uh, Lee Wood, though, you know, he wants to extract his revenge. 
But he's going to have to shake off that loss right away and get Lara back in the ring in like May or June. And I'm just not seeing that quick of a turnaround. It could, though. I mean, because it was kind of a one punch. But Lara hits you with more than one punches before he gets to you. And, um, and, and I personally think it makes more sense for Lee Wood to go get a victory in between, allow the Lara Warrington fight to happen. Because whether it's Lara in a rematch or whether it's Warrington in a show, an all UK showdown, that's a huge fight for Lee Wood. So I say he waits it out, goes in, uh, maybe fights another dude ranked and, and beats him to sure up that title shot with, uh, with Mauricio Lara. That that's, that's what I think Lee Wood should do, uh, and everything in that scenario. Uh, then you got Michael Conlin, former world title challenger. From what I'm hearing, Conlin's likely, which would be a rematch for Lee Wood. Conlin's likely going to fight Luis Lopez next for the, for the IBF title. And he's with top rank. So, you know, not, not likely, even though a rematch would be great. And Conlin does want that rematch. So I do think there's an outside option that the two sides could work together and potentially fight each other. Um, you know, Conlin and Lopez, I do believe is going to take place in the first half of the year. And maybe if Conlon becomes IBF champ, he says in the second half, hey, I'll fight Lee Wood again. And then we could be looking at a you know big time unification bout early next year between the winner of Lara and Warrington and the winner of Conlon and uh uh Conlon and Luis Lopez and Lee Wood potentially. So I do think there's a possibility at a rematch um for uh our, our uh, you know at a rematch our, our I'm I drifted off into Lee Wood right there. I apologize. I do think I don't think there's a possibility for Conlin and Lara. I think Lara really is stuck with two options, and that leaves Isaac Dogbay, who I think is going to lose his next fight anyways, um, to uh Robesai Ramirez. So for Mauricio Lara, that's the video we're on. I'm sorry I drifted off into Lee Wood right there. Um Lara, I think it's really two options. It's either the the rematch with Lee Wood or the third fight with Warrington. And I don't think Lee, uh, Mauricio Lara cares who it is. I think he'd rather do the third fight with Warrington because at the end of the day, he got burned. He really did. He destroyed Warrington in their first fight. The rematch only went two rounds. A cut stopped it. And um, and people acted like Warrington won. Warrington went on and fought Kiko Martinez and won the IBF title. You know, and while Mauricio Lara is sitting there pretty much part of my you know, my French with his dick in his hand, waiting around for somebody to want to fight him. Then he finally gets the opportunity now. And then Warrington happened to lose to Luis Lopez. So I, I think Mauricio Lara, like it, for him, it's almost like wanting to prove a point. And after the fight, he spit on Josh Warrington. So, and he's unapologetic about it. He want he, he doesn't care. He's like, fuck it. I don't care. I want to fight him again. You know? So I think Lara for Lara, it's a statement. Uh, fight against Warrington and Warrington it should be a statement fight because he wants to become world champion it could lead to a show uh, all UK showdown I think that's more likely in my opinion that we're going to see Lara and Josh Warrington in the summer um, and then uh, probably Lee Wood would fight the winner but Lee Wood is still a possibility also because he has a rematch clause so I think we're going to find out very soon if um, if Lee Wood's going to extract that rematch clause and maybe early summer, we'll see uh, Wood and Lara. But I really believe Lara's next opponent is going to be Josh Warrington in a third fight with the winner to fight Lee Wood. So a lot of big doings for and a lot of big options for Mauricio Lara following that that uh, that knockout win and uh, over Lee Wood to become the world champion. So that's it. That's what I got. That's the what's next on Mauricio Lara, the newly crowned WBA featherweight champion of the world at 126 pounds. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.